Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 326 of the Mark and Me podcast. As always, I'm your host, Mark. Now, joining me on today's episode is Connor Dockery. Yes, the guitarist and backing vocalist from the awesome Irish band, The Scratch. This band are really starting to create a name for themselves. Listen to them after you've heard today's interview. And as we're sitting here right now and you're listening to this, they're currently embarking on a UK tour. So there's still dates to go and see them in London, Newcastle, Glasgow, Liverpool, Manchester and Nottingham. And please go and check them out. They are so good. Their energy and everything about them is just phenomenal. And they're one of the hardest working bands out there. So they really do deserve your attention. And that interview is coming up in just a couple of minutes time. But let's quickly touch base and talk about my last episode. On episode 325, I was joined by the amazing writer and director, Joseph Milson. An amazing interview. Joseph was kind enough to share the interview. So it got really, really big. And I want to say thanks to everyone that's jumped on board and might be new to Mark and me that has now discovered this from Joseph taking the time and sharing this interview. But today it's all about The Scratch, a band that you should be listening to right now. Well, not right now, after today's interview. So I think the best thing to do now is to get straight to it. So here's me and Connor talking all things music. So Connor, thanks for joining me today on the Mark and Me podcast. You're welcome, Mark. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. What I do, Connor, with all guests that come on the show is take it right back to the very start. I'm always interested in those first albums that maybe you bought or were given as a kid that made you fall in love with music. Mm. Um, I'd say like one of the, my early memories of, of uh, I guess, seeing something was um, Dire Straits on the night. My dad had it on video. And God, I used to watch that religiously. But I remember the first time I saw that. Up to that point, it was probably like boy bands and that my sisters were listening to. And then I saw that and I was like, whatever, whatever he, whatever they're doing, I want to do that. Um, So that was a big album in our house. And then, yeah, I kind of like quickly, quickly moved on to, to, you know, Metallica, Pantera, Slayer, Testament, you know, those, those Bay Area thrash bands that my, my guitar teacher introduced me to um god when it was like right at the start of when i got guitar lessons so it must have been like nine or ten so yeah kind of rock music came on the scene and then very quickly metal do you remember those kind of first gigs because i saw i was lucky like i share my age now but i went to one of the first uk ozfests and the lineup was like soulfly pantera um slayer And it just blew my mind. I wasn't that old, actually. I remember my parents had to drop me off, but it changed my life. Yeah. I was like, seeing Dimebag Dow play and all this, I was like, that's all I want to do for the rest of my life. I couldn't believe just how incredible a live band could sound. And I was wondering, did you have an introduction to live music as good as that? Or was it something embarrassing that you don't tell people? Well, yeah, it's, it, I, my first ever gig was Paul McCartney. Oh, wow. Uh, and my family, just they just brought the whole family and I... I think I cared more about his drummer than <laughs> than the music, which in hindsight was a little bit uh, a little bit naive. But then my my second gig after that was Metallica 2003 uh, in Dublin, and that was a game changer. Yeah, it was like the lineup was Metallica, Linkin Park, Lost Prophets, and The Darkness. Bloody hell! It, it was a wild one, yeah. But um. Yeah, Metallica. That was just like when I saw it. Yeah, that was mind blowing as a second gig. Did Did you know at that point uh, and at that age that that's what you want to do, or was it just a dream? Or did you do that whole kind of school and college thing of being in those band like Battle of the Bands kind of cover bands, or did you go kind of a bit later on? Yeah, like I think I did know pretty early on. Yeah, it was it was definitely. I mean. I so I went through the you know did school did college and but I think from that from my early early teens it was uh it was just an obsession and a a kind of a, an intense curiosity around live music and and bands and and what that might feel like to play a gig and or to play in in front of a crowd like that or like a big crowd like all those things like the imagination was just it was running wild pretty early so. Yeah, I mean, I've pretty much been in a band since since I could 
since I could, you know, at 14 or so. So still going for better or for worse. And what was the point that the scratch formed? Was that kind of with just some mates or did you have some lineup changes from previous bands or how did that actually come about? It was um, the, the three of the four of us were in were in a metal band for the guts of 10 years. Uh, uh, from like, you know, I guess the age of 16, 17 up until our late 20s. And uh, that kind of ran it that, that ran its course. And I remember three, the three three of us from that band that are in the scratch now were, were living together at the time. And I think it was with everything that we kind of experienced in that band and even that genre of music and that whole world. I think we just we just wanted we wanted an outlet. We wanted something where we could may, maybe express ourselves a bit more authentically. Yeah, and I think. You know, I love metal and I love the genre, you know, I love, you know, everything about it really. But as a genre and as a world, it's it, it can be tricky to to express yourself authentically or to really um, feel like you can just do, say and act, act how you want. Um, and like, yeah, so the scratch, the scratch was a real was just a, a complete accident where we were living together. We were looking to do something more fun more lighthearted, more, more ourselves, you know, something we could, we could just kind of put more of ourselves into. And the scratch kind of happened one night in the house where the Lango and Jordo were, were um, just jamming on, a, on, on acoustic guitars. And um, they were, they were learning, a, they were learning this, basically it was Glenn Hansard covering a song by, um an irish band called interference called gold there's an amazing version of it on youtube of glenn singing it in the body clan in paris and the guy the lads were like oh it'd be great if we like learned this tune and like learned the vocals and they'd never sang before you know but then by the end of the day they'd written two instrumental songs and they those two songs are like the first two tracks on our first ep so it was kind of like and then they kind of called me down and they were like man you need to hear this like we just kind of stumbled on this thing with these acoustics and and uh, i was blown away um so that was it that was kind of the moment where we were like this is this is exciting and it was just complete free reign like we can just take this any direction we want and we can do and say whatever we want and we can just really be ourselves and and then it just i guess yeah kind of haven't really looked back since that day it's grown rapidly, hasn't it? Because then you're in a metal band for 10 years and then you form this other band with the members. You surely never anticipated the growth in which it happened to be playing Reading and Leeds against, you know, some of these incredible bands. One of my favorite festivals ever, 2000 Trees, you know, a couple of years oh. running. The lineup, you know, Jimmy World, Fry's Turnstile, all these amazing bands. And it's just grown and grown. And, you know, you must have never had any expectations, but at the same time, it just must be like pinch yourself moments all the time. Yeah, man. Like, I think that was the, probably the beauty of it was for the longest time, for the first two or three years, I would say there was like genuinely zero expectation, zero kind of, okay, we're going to, we're going to make this something or whatever. And I think, I think that's what connected with people. If I had to put my finger on it, I think early on it was like there was kind of an irreverence and a lack of, you know, not a lack of ambition, but just like pe I think people could tell that this was just us trying to have a good time. Yeah. And it's funny. It's like, it's, you know, it's funny when you, when you really try to not connect with people, that's when people connect with you almost, you know, and we, I think, we realized from the first video we put online, which was just a, us like jamming in our, in, in our kitchen. You, I, I like haven't been in a van for so many years. Like, and we weren't young at the, we were in our late twenties, you know, we've been around and been doing it. And I could tell like straight away that this was different, that it was connecting with people. It was just, I had never experienced it before. And that was only like, that was kind of day week one or two, you know? So I think, the beauty of it was we, we kind of we didn't really force anything for 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 the longest time and the progression of the band just it all kind of happened very organically and it was just one step after the next and we were like okay well maybe we'll play a gig now and see what happens and maybe we'll do this and this and 
Um, now it's very different, you know. It's like playing, you know, we got we're 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 playing Rock and Ring and Rock and Park next summer, and now all of a sudden you're like, okay, now we have to like we got to make sure we go out and and like really really smash it, you know. So, um, but yeah, I think we we still try and not take it take ourselves too seriously because I think you know it would be a shame to lose that original. I guess the original magic of it for us. So, but yeah, it's it's. There's been so many pinch pinch yourself moments in the last in the last year in particular, and even before the pandemic, there was that tail end of 2019. There was a few things happening, and we were just like, "Holy shit!" You know. So, yeah, very fortunate, and and just trying to trying to hold it all together and do it for as long as we can. Do do you think it is the mindset of not having those kind of ambitions and kind of dreams where obviously you want to be successful, but you're not putting pressure on yourself? And you then said sometimes, you know, not having those expectations kind of help because I think too many bands, and it's quite transparent at times, try too hard. So they're trying to play every show every support slot, every battle of the bands. And it gets to the point where it's like, oh, that ba- that band's on again and again and again. Yeah. And it, not, I'm not saying it screams desperation because everyone's entitled and should be working their ass off to try and get themselves seen. But maybe mm. just the relaxed approach for you guys just worked. Maybe it was just the, let's just have fun and do it for that reason. And then if anything comes from it, you know the phone yeah. rings. Do you want to play rock and ring? Fucking hell! Like, okay, let's yeah, keep, yeah. let's keep like our heads grounded and just keep having fun. No, yeah, absolutely, man. I think, I think, um, and look, I, I'm, you know, like you can't, you can't pull the wall over people's eyes. You know, like it's as much as maybe you think you can. It's like people see people see through everything, you know, and they yeah. see things, fans of music, you know, they, they, they see things for what they are. And, and like, we've definitely been guilty of over trying too hard and, and, and over, overreaching for stuff and, and like maybe being a little bit too desperate. And, and it's just a very, it's a very natural, like I, I would never blame anyone for finding themselves in that position, you know, but, People, people do feel that, you know, and I think luckily for us, um, I think we built a lot of our fan base early on by, gen- by as you said, just like genuinely not trying. Uh, and I don't think, you know, that certainly wasn't like, it wasn't like this big strategic thing that we, that we had. It was, it was just where we were at in our lives. And I think coming out of, 10 years of being in a metal band and taking it so seriously and like so being so desperate and just being constantly bashed down bashed down and disappointment after disappointment it's like there was no other option for us but to really really not care and it was probably a defense mechanism but ultimately it worked you know and and i guess the trick the tricky thing now is to try and maintain trying to maintain that that spirit but also things are just different now and things change. So you do have to take it more seriously. Opportunities arise and you got to grab them, you know? So yeah, it's a tricky balance, but I think um, we're very conscious of like trying to, trying to stay, stay somewhat in that world of like, you know what, if this ends tomorrow, it's grand. And in the meantime, we're just going to have fun and hopefully people connect with that and relate to that. Do you always want to kind of keep it as kind of a organic kind of independent homegrown thing in the way that I know yourself, you do all the merch design, don't you, for what goes out there and you're kind of like the creative director um, and you kind of manage the band. Um, Is that a conscious choice so you can have that kind of freedom and not be told to play what songs and be at certain places and play for certain shows. You actually, it's like an independent film director, isn't it? You, you get to say mm. how the pieces are going to be moved. And I think a lot of bands can lose touch of that once they sign mm. these big deals and then lose track of what made them who they are today. Yeah. Like I, I'd say like for myself, uh, finding myself in, 
in those positions. I wouldn't say it was uh, consciously to you know to make sure that we 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 don't lose touch of that. But I think for me, for me, it was born out of a kind of a frustration of just having to constantly wait yeah. for other people to do these jobs for you. When, when, in, when in my, I could always, I like, I would have a vision for something, whether it be a merch design, a video, a promo video or something like that. And like, before I knew how to do any of those things, I was just so frustrated with how long it would all take and, and, and the money it would cost, you know? So for me, it was really like, re- Gaining, regaining control of that stuff just meant we could move quicker and we could we could present ourselves the way, exact the exact way we want to present ourselves and i think since then that's it's a good point about it it i would say it kind of has freed us you know it's 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 just put the ball kept the ball in our court in a lot of areas whereas maybe a lot of other artists rely on rely a lot he- more heavily on their label and management and, and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think what I do like about us is, is we do, um, we do a lot of that stuff ourselves and, and we do have quite a strong vision of how we, we want to come across. And, and then, you know, there's other members in the band that would be very, 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 have very, very strong stances on, on creative control. Um, and that's great. I think it's really valuable because, you, as you said, it's in this industry with all, you know, uh, with the amount of things that come at you at once and the amount of people in your ear at different stages and you should do this, you should do that, X, Y, and Z. It's like if if you having those strong characters in the group that that can that can take a stance on something and go, no, that's we're not doing that um is is has been really valuable for us and it's definitely credit to the other guys in the band um as well and it's kind of a collective effort to always maintain that kind of freedom i guess it is and like you're never going to have full freedom and that's we understand that and sometimes you just have to do stuff you don't want to do but i think we we would be terrified of, of losing our way in that sense that's really important to us like is it also kind of a negative at the same time because you must never sleep you must be always yeah. having to do stuff i mean as good as it is and the freedom's beautiful and the creative control is so good yeah. surely there must be days sometimes where you're like i wish fucking wish someone could do this for me and just oh, let man. me have a proper day off yeah this whole uh, this whole campaign i i think it's for for the first time ever i'd say i've i've uh, i've had to just kind of relinquish control of certain things and be like just let them do it it's fine i don't care even if it's not perfect it's fine you know so even last night we had like a promo day yesterday and it's just been full on <clears throat> we're kind of in 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 the middle of tour as well and got home last night and i was just like absolutely wrecked and then like manager was like dude we got to announce these us dates tomorrow uh i need a poster and i'm like oh god and it's like i really just didn't want to do it but it was like if i don't do it we pro- will probably miss the announce tomorrow yeah and it's like you know so you're right it's it's a blessing and a curse and i mean you know that's probably the one thing people would say to me is just you you, you know you need to like delegate a bit more and it's hard though, isn't it? It's hard to let uh, go. It's uh, hard to yeah. kind of. I'm a control freak. Someone's offered to edit my episodes before, and I'm like, nope. I like, could tell by that question. I was like, I think I feel like you're the you're the same. I think I think you. Understand. I can't hand it over, dude. For some reason, I want to do all the artwork. I want all the graphics to be the right way. I will choose yeah. the guests and not let anyone. Someone's like, I can do that for you. I'm like, I really appreciate that, but it's mm-hmm. never going to happen. Like. I just no, man, I, res- I respect that you know I totally respect that and you, I guess you know then those days where you're like oh this is <laughs> this is bad for my health you know mate this yeah. is my uh interview schedule this week and I'm like oh my oh, god wow. like yeah. it's amazing I'll never turn them down in every interview I'm very very blessed but honestly some days you're like six down two more to go <laughs> <laughs> fair play but it's all good and um I, I think for the 
the time being, you guys have kind of got this incredible future ahead of you, even though you're now on your second album. Obviously, as we sit in here right now, Mind Yourself is literally out. Um, people yeah. can hear it. But not only that, you've got a huge amount of UK shows. It seems like you've got no real time to sit back. You just said you're doing lots of press at the moment, but you're starting the year with loads of dates in the UK. There's loads. Uh, and then you've got, like you said, some dates in America, which you just can't turn down. Yeah, man. Like, I don't know. I guess this is this is what you sign up for. And, and I think um, this is the first time we've we've done, like, I mean, this is definitely the most extensive touring we've ever done in any band. And and also the most extensive kind of promo and you know that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's all it's all kind of it's all new territory for us. Even though we're in our early thirties, it's like we're all. It's like the first time we're really experiencing that sort of schedule. So, I mean, it's it's we're unbelievably grateful. You know, I think uh, it can be hard to some some days you wake up and. You know, there, there might be some tension in the group and everyone's tired and just a little bit like fed up and you might be broke that week or, you know, it's like <laughs> the, 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 the list goes on, but I don't know. Then you kind of have these moments of clarity and you look at it and you just go, ah, like this is, this is the, this is the dream, you know, and we just need to refocus, remember what's happening here and, and, uh, and just smash it, you know what I mean? So that's kind of where our heads are at at the moment. If I told you a year ago that you'd be playing Rock and Ring, you'd have told me to fuck off, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, definitely. How How's that, that feel? Are you nervous about that? I mean, looking at the post and you see stuff like Green Day, Parkway Drive, Avenged Sevenfold, Queens of the Stone Age, I'd be like, Jesus Christ, like, I'd frame the poster, yeah. don't get me wrong, that'd be on my wall for life. Like, look, we made it, but... Uh... Yeah, man, I think, I think, like, there was, there's been a few, like, we've, played a few festivals like this summer was we did like something like 20 festivals and uh but like i think the metalhead in all of us um i think festivals like rock and ring rock and park and download and um 2000 trees and and these these types of festivals i think they they kind of hit home a little bit more for us it's because i i grew up i mean everyone knows rock and ring you know yeah. like and i've i've grown up watching i've watched countless live sets from rock and ring and all my favorite bands you know like i remember seeing architects do rock and ring one year you know because you know i i've been been a fan of them since like the ruin days and watching them on the way and there's like you know bands like that and you see them do rock and ring one year you're like oh my god like, imagine <laughs> imagine doing that like that that you've literally like you've made it if you're doing that you know that that's the kind of, and then so when you when you when you when you're i don't know when, when you get booked for something like that it's like it's kind of hard to process you know but ah uh, that's going to be one that yeah i'm just hoping we can kind of hang out for a bit like sometimes you're like in and out of these festivals because of scheduling um, so I'm hoping for something like Rock and Ring, we can we can just really take it in, hang out for the day, meet some bands, watch some bands, and like really take in the experience. But yeah, that's the problem sometimes. Wait. If you're working it, I did download last year, Two Thousand yeah. Trees, um, Arc Tangent, and you you turn around at one point, and you're like, oh, I've missed like seven bands that I really want to see, and I just oh, want to sit and have yeah. a beer and a bit of food and be like, oh, I I would like to actually see the set of Fries, you know oh man for sure like that's that's the i mean playing all these festivals is amazing but eight like 70 percent of the time maybe more 80 percent of the time you're like you're you're in you arrive it's chaos and then you play the set and then it's like all right <laughs> we gotta go in like 40 minutes and then it's like you don't get to see any fucking band or like all your favorite bands are playing like the day you're not playing you know it's like so yeah, there's a bit of luck involved in that, and yeah, when you're work, you're it's it is work at the end of the day, you know, and you uh you have to remember that, and the your experience of these festivals is is never really going to be the same if if you're working them as it is just going and you know. Are you allowed to uh, say at this point if you're doing any UK festivals next summer or? Um, nothing 
as of yet, I think there's some in the works, all right. So yeah. we're just we're just kind of holding out. But uh, Rock and Ring's the only festival we've announced. So yeah, Rock and Ring, Rock and Park. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Especially with two thousand trees, like you've done, I think two years running. You got to make it another one. Keep going. Yeah, come on, it's main stage this year. Main <laughs> stage this year. James, if you, you know the organizers, if you're listening, put yeah, these guys on, on the main stage now. Like. <laughs> smashed it out of the park there the last two years now it's time for you know what i mean well i will try and make some calls <laughs> yeah cheers mark and then you can buy me a beer oh, for sure uh what, what i do on this podcast um and try and make it as original as i can is the artist that comes on gets to choose the final song that's played so it can be any band anyone in the world Oof. any piece of music but as the last song that's played you get to choose it and i do put you on the spot and i was wondering is there a song that when I ask that question comes to your head before any other that you would love to be played out on the end of today's episode? Oh my God. Bands struggle a lot with this because you've probably got a million songs in your head. I mean, the first one that comes to head is John Martin's Small Hours. Yeah. Yeah. That might relax. I think it might be a nice relax. It might relax the minds of people. I was ready for you to say like Pantera or Slayer or something, but no, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go unexpected here. I'm gonna go proper left field. And I'm gonna say John Martin's Small Hours. Is it just because you love the song and want to end on a nice little soothing moment? In I just, it was just came to mind. I just, I yeah, I love the song. It's a, uh, it's a beautiful song. But uh, I mean, I can go. I can, I can suggest heavier if you want. No, no, I'm. Uh, it's the one that comes to your heart first, and I, and I think there's a reason why it does. So that, that's uh, good enough for me. And if it puts if it puts anyone onto John Martin, that's that's uh, that's that's good. That's a good well, thing. That's always good. Some people come on and pick, you know, Oasis or the Beatles. But when someone comes across and then's like, "Oh, I've not heard this before," and then they go down rabbit holes and discover and listen to everything they've ever made, then I feel like we've done a good job. Yeah, and I feel like maybe maybe a lot of people might not know this song by him. They might know him, or if they don't know him, definitely get 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 them in. Amazing. Dude, I'm sure you're absolutely manic. So I just want to say thanks for your time. Um, I've been lucky enough to obviously listen to mine yourself for just over a week. I got like an advanced copy. Uh, truly, it's it's fucking awesome, dude. Um, oh. I, I listen to music now. I'm getting to that age where I can only listen in the car because I'm so busy. So I'm like, oh, I'm going on a drive. So I, I put music on then. I just don't have the chance to sit at home and enjoy music because of just work and busy uh, yeah. life. But honestly, it's fucking ace, dude. I'm not just saying that, and that's why it was a pleasure to have you on. And I, uh, I'm really looking forward to the UK dates. I'll come and say hello and grab a beer with you when uh, I think it's yeah, January or February. Whatever. I think I think you're playing Birmingham, which is not too far. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Late late Jan, early Feb is the UK tour. So uh, yeah, thanks for the kind words, man, and thanks for having me on. Really appreciate it. No, it's a good one, and good luck, obviously, with the rest of the press and the album and the tour, and obviously traveling to play the, one of the best festivals of all time. Yeah, man. Thank you awesome, very much. Dude. Look after yourself and take care. So there it is. There's my interview with me and Connor from the brilliant band, The Scratch. And as I said at the start of today's interview, the band are touring right now in the UK. So if you're listening to this and you're in the UK, go and check them out. You will not be disappointed. And I really can't wait to catch them, hopefully, at some festivals during the summer. Also go and check the band out on Spotify or be good enough to go and actually buy their music if you see them on tour or go on their band camp or website and buy an album because these guys really deserve your time, attention and money. These bands go out there, work so hard and really should be absolutely huge and I do believe the Scratch are on that way and on that path to a huge, huge reward very, very soon. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please, as always, share this. All the links are on markandme.com. I make it so simple on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just hit the retweet button, the like button, or share button. And, as always, I do have a Patreon account. I rely on this to keep the podcast going. I understand people are a bit tough with money at the moment, and I have lost a few. And it's really difficult to kind of keep funding this, to put it out there on all these different directories, because of the bandwidth is required for all these audience, which is a good problem to have but it costs a lot of money each and every month so if you do like this episode and want to support the podcast there's a link on markandme.com and it's as little as one pound a month and really makes a difference i'm sitting here right now and i'm so excited by the next week on mark and me i think it could be one of the biggest that i've ever had and i really mean that 
Over the last couple of weeks, I've recorded some of my favourite interviews, really deep with some of the best musicians and actors around, and I can't wait to share them with you. So I promise this week ahead is going to be insane. But until we get there, look after yourself, listen to The Scratch, go and see The Scratch, take care, and I'll speak to you all very soon.